All right, good morning. Uh, welcome to Bucknell Fellowship. Uh, we've been going through the uh, Book of Romans for our Bible study portion. Uh, we started. I, I wanted to start the Book of Romans because Romans is the first epistle of the Apostle Paul, and it talks about uh, the doctrine for grace believers today. Uh, because in time past, it was not ever mentioned about ever going to heaven. It was not ever mentioned by being saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. That first became mentioned only with the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And so now today, anybody who's saved today, you're saved by grace through faith. You're not saved by repenting. You're not saved by being water baptized. Those are all things that was Israel's program. And the main thing that we have to do, and like we always talk about, is rightly divide the word of truth. You have to understand what God intended for the nation of Israel and what he's intending for us today. And today, our apostle is the apostle Paul, who says that I am the apostle of the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. Uh, so if anybody who's the Gentile or a part of the nations, uh, we're saved today by our apostle and his doctrine, which, it, which comes from God himself. And that's the doctrine of the gospel, the grace of God. Uh, so we've been starting out in Romans. Uh, I think we ended up in Romans chapter number 6. Uh, I think it was verse number 19, I believe. Uh, yeah, Romans 6 and 19 is where we left off. You want to go back to 15, Pastor? Yeah, we'll st let's start at 15 so we can kind of get the context. Uh, well, let's just start at 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, we understand today... Uh, that we're not under the, the bondage of the law. Uh, when you go to most denominational churches, they, a lot, they teach a lot of things that were contained in the law. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul says that if you do the law, you become a debtor to the things contained in the law. Mm -hmm. And if you break one law, then you've offended all of them. Mm -hmm. but, but today, because Christ has came to fulfill the law, we don't live under the law anymore we live under grace right that's and when right. you say that most people like to say that well that means you can live and do anything you want that's, that's not what we're teaching Amen. because that's not what the bible teaches look at verse 15 what then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace the strongest protest in scripture is what god, god, forbid. god forbid right god Amen. we don't live any kind of way we want but we live under because of the grace that was given to us freely by the work that jesus christ did on the cross mm -hmm. verse 16 Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Listen, when, when, you, when you're driving and you see the yield sign, mm -hmm. a lot of times most of us don't really yield. You know, we just we drive right, right through. Right. But, but the yield means to what? Take caution and just uh, be cautious about going out and make sure that it's okay as far as the traffic is concerned for you to go out, right? So, so, so yield means to kind of stop and to kind of caution uh, uh, to kind of uh, 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 see what's going on. And so what Paul is saying is that to whomever ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants to you whom, whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death, you can yield yourself unto death or of obedience unto what? Righteousness, right? So, so, so you, if you want, you can serve sin or you can serve righteousness. It's up, the choice is up to you, right? So, so, so that is the issue uh, when we're talking about living under grace and not living under the law, you still have a choice, right? You have a choice to live saved or you have a choice to not live saved. Because God saves you and because Jesus died on the cross, he does not take away your volition, your free will, right? You still have that. So when you talk to people and the carnal-minded person, when you say, listen, I don't have to follow, I don't live under the law, I live under grace. The carnal-minded person would say, well... Yeah, I can do whatever I want. But the person who's chasing after the spirit and righteousness of God is going to say, I'm going to yield myself not unto sin unto death, but obedience unto what? Righteousness. And the obedience comes from the gospel of grace, which is found in the 13 epistles of Paul. Right? Verse 17. But God be thanked. We thank God because of what he's done. That ye were the servants of sin. We were servants. We were uh, when you look at the chart, the Gentiles had not the law of God. Mm -hmm. God only gave his law and commandments to the nation of Israel, right? right. So, so because of that, verse 17 says that ye were servants of sin. Because we didn't know no better and we were at a dispensational disadvantage, we served sin. 
But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of what? Doctrine which was delivered you. Uh -huh. Right? Doctrine has to do with the study. That's why Paul said in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. And then he tells you how, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's a distinction and a division that we have to make. And that division is from what was to Israel, the law, and what's to the Gentiles today, which is grace. Right? And that's the form of doctrine. And this doctrine was only preached by the Apostle Paul. Nobody back here said that Jesus died to save us for our sins mm -hmm. because they didn't know that back here, mm -hmm. right? No. That's why it's progressive revelation, right? And Paul only, uh, God only gave the mystery, the doctrine of the grace of God to be saved by grace through faith. He only gave that to the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. because Paul, of anybody, had, need, had and needed God's grace. Mm -hmm because he was persecuting the church, right? Yeah. Uh, verse uh, 18. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of what? Right. Righteousness, right? right? If, if, if I'm free from sin, and we, we saw that the law is the knowledge and the strength of sin. Mm -hmm. You don't know what sin is until you have the law, mm -hmm. right? So when you, uh, Paul says you use the law, you just use it lawfully. So if there's somebody who thinks that they can make it to heaven on their own and they think they're saved by their own works, then you give them the law. Mm -hmm. Because the law is going to show you that you're not righteous. But understand that if I'm already saved by grace through faith, don't put me up under the bondage of the law because I'm free from that. Being then made free from sin. The knowledge of sin is the law. So I'm free from sin. I'm free from the law because I'm under grace. And now I become servants of what? Righteousness. Right? I can't become a servant of righteousness under this bondage of this law. Right? Anything contained in the law, all those things contained in that law, you become bondage to. A lot of a big thing is tithing with the denominational church. They keep people under the bondage of giving by giving them tithing. Tithing was not even money, first of all, and it was a commandment under the law to the nation of Israel. Amen. The apostle Paul never spoke about tithing. So if the form of doctrine that we just read about was delivered by Paul, then it's his apostles that we, uh, his epistles that we follow. And none of it, he never mentions the word tithe. Amen. And it was never money. Why? Because we're not under the law. We're under grace. Amen. Right? Uh, verse 19. Uh, look what Paul says here. He says, I speak after the what? Amen. Manner of men. Now, what Paul is doing, he's speaking from a perspective of man. Right. Because you know, a, a lot of times you can break this Bible down uh, 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 spiritually. There's a spiritual insight. But a lot of times people don't understand because people don't have the, people don't have uh, uh, the spirit of God. So you have to give it to them in a natural sense. And that's what Paul is doing here. Uh, even even uh, even Peter says that Second uh, uh, Peter three and 15, he says, look at what the apostle Paul wrote. And there's some things that are hard to be understood. Mm -hmm. Most churches, because they don't rightly divide, it's hard to understand Paul's writings. Right? And so that's what Paul is doing now. He says, I'm speaking after the manner of men. Right? Uh, uh, so, so he's going to break it down in a natural sense here. He says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Right? The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. But they have to be what? Spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. So that's what he's saying here. Because of the infirmity of our flesh, we can't know the spiritual thing. But so many times in denominational church, they want you to what? Work. Do things of your flesh to get you closer to God. That, that, that's not God's salvation today. That's not his plan. For, at, for which may, uh, further explanation, as ye have yielded your members' servants to un what? Cleanness and to what? Iniquity unto iniquity. Even so, now yield your members' service to righteousness unto what? Holiness. Now, understand this. This uncleanliness has to do with the carnal side of the flesh, right? Uh, unholy, uh, uh, carnal. But iniquity, a lot of times people think, what is iniquity? Sin. 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 Huh? Sin. 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 Right? Personal sin. That's most people put it. But really, iniquity is just the religious side of it, right? Uh, 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 how do I put this? 
Iniquity is more the spiritual side. The uncleanliness has to do with your carnal flesh. The iniquity is the spiritual side. Because iniquity ends up being personal sin because it's in opposition to God's will. Right? So you commit iniquity. That's why we were born in sin, shaped in what? Iniquity, Psalms 51 says. Because that iniquity means that we've never had God's statutes and commandments. So we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, right? Uh, so, so it has to do with those things that are ungodly. And if you don't follow the doctrine of God, you're going to be considered what? And you're going to be considered to have iniquity. Because the, the way you sin against God is not knowing the message. See, you can know the law, but that's not what God is dealing with today. He's dealing with grace. Amen. So you can know the law and teach the law, but you're committing iniquity unto iniquity. Why? Because it's ungodly. God is not an author of confusion. He's not going to operate the program of the law and the program of grace. He can only do one. Then after we're finished, he's going to pick it up back here and finish Israel's program. They've just been postponed because he has something special in store. Right? Now, uh, 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 understand even back in verse 17, it says the form of doctrine. So that iniquity has to do with that doctrine, but it's religious doctrine. When you go to every denomination and every church, they have a, a, a black book, mm -hmm. right? The, the Mormons have a book. The uh, 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 Muslims have a Quran. Everybody has their own personal religious doctrine. That is iniquity, right? That is iniquity. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is following the laws of man and not the law of God. So that is iniquity, right? We don't have no book. We don't have any of that. The only book we have is this Bible. That's right. Because that's the only thing that we follow. Amen. Because all the other stuff is obsolete, right? So you, you, you can't add anything to this word and you can't take anything from it, right? Uh, so, so we see that here. Now, as you go against God's word, what you're doing is spiraling down the road of perdition. And that's why that, that iniquity has to do with a personal thing. Because you have a choice to choose salvation and choose God's word, or you have a choice not to, right? Look at verse 20. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Understand this word free now. Go back to uh, verse 18. I want to read 18 and verse 20 together. Being, verse 18. Being then made free from what? Sin. sin. Go to verse 20. Uh, part B, after the comma. Ye were free from what? Righteousness. righteousness. So if you serve sin, then you become free from righteousness. But if you yield yourself members and servants unto righteousness, you become free from what? Sin. But the choice is up to you. The choice is up to you. I could preach and teach till I'm blue in the face. But if you don't want to follow righteousness, that's up to you. You can yield your members as servants to this law, but the strength of the law is sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, the strength of sin is the law. So if you want to follow the law, you're going to be committing sin because that's not the, the righteousness of God for today, right? Verse, uh... So, Pastor, is that basically the same thing Jesus was saying to the apostles back in John 8? Yes, yes. Because, because a lot, and what happens is when he frees them, when, when he, let, let's go there, let's go there, because I want to point something out. That's a good point. I want to point something out in that. Because John 8 is talking about when, he, when it goes back to the woman that was caught in what, uh, uh, adultery, mm -hmm. right? And he's talking about he who cast the first stone. That's John 8, right? So let, let, turn there, because I want you to see something now that you bring that up. Uh... Uh, let's start at verse number. Let's start at verse number five. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? So what 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 they're saying is they caught this woman in adultery. Mm -hmm. The fact that they caught her, which means that one of their buddies had to be the one committing it with her, right? So understand that that's how they caught her, right? So but 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 it's it's funny how uh, how quickly the the the, the, the uh, the, the accused quickly becomes the perpetrator, 
right? Because now they, they caught her, so now they want to bring him to the Lord. They didn't bring him, they brought her, right? So now they're saying, Jesus, now what do you have to say? Because understand, even in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the issue was what? The law. Mm -hmm. The issue was still the law. We didn't come unto grace until Paul's epistles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most preachers preach from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because it's the, the words that are in red are the most important because those are Jesus' words, right? Mm -hmm. But understand that Jesus was a minister only to Israel. Mm -hmm. He said out of his own mouth the words in red, I am only sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, 24. Right? So, so understand this. This verse 6, John 8, 6, this they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now that's significant in itself. I went over that, but we won't go over that today. But verse 7, so when they continue asking him, look at what Jesus did now. Mm -hmm. He lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, mm -hmm. let him what? Cast, uh, cast a stone at her. Right? So what Paul is saying is that when you're free from sin, you obey righteousness. Mm -hmm. you, you're able to cast a stone. Mm -hmm. But none of them according to the law, because the law, if you serve the law, then you're what? Free from righteousness. Mm -hmm. So none of them were righteous enough to throw a stone. But yet they're trying to condemn somebody else. Mm -hmm. But don't you see that a lot in churches today? Uh -huh. They will condemn you for, for, for one thing, but yet on the other hand, they make an excuse for what they've done. Amen. Right? But, the, but we're free from any of that. Amen. I'm struggling and growing in grace just like all of you. Yeah. So there's no need for me to stand up here and preach condemnation right. because therefore there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. So, so understand that. We don't walk after the flesh. So that, that's a good point. Yeah, no. And it has a lot to do with that. Then going back to his own words that he was speaking in 34. Uh -huh. Yeah, go, go to verse 34. Start at 31, Pastor. 31, that's what you was about to say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, now listen to this. He said to the Jews that what? Believe. Believed on him. Understand this now. If ye continue in my what? Word. Word. Understand this. Go back to Romans 6 real quick. I want you to see something. I'm glad you brought this up because when you say scriptures, it gets my mind to go on. But look at verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of what? Doctrine, doctrine which was delivered what? On you. What doctrine is Paul talking about? The gospel of grace. The gospel of grace. Go back to John 8. Verse 31, if you continue in my word, what word were they following? The, the, law. Law. the law. Understand this now. That is the forms of doctrine. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus. Uh, then ye are, then are ye my what? Disciples, Disciples indeed. Yeah. Disciples were followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are more than just mere disciples, but we're what? Ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. We not only just follow, but we speak on his behalf. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Uh, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. free. The truth for us today is not what he's saying here, the law. The truth for us today is grace. That's right. And now, because of that, we are what? Free. free. The truth has made us free from the bondage of everything back here. That's interdispensational. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Verse 33, they answered him, we be in Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. Because God back here separated Abraham from amongst the nations and said Abraham is going to be a father of many nations. So what the Jews did is they felt comfort in being Abraham's seed. But Paul is going to say in Romans 9, not all of Israel are of Israel. Just because you're Abraham's seed, that don't cover you. <laughs> that don't cover you just because you're Abraham's seed. Just because you're in the four walls of the church, that ain't going to cover you. Mm -hmm. Right? So what do he say here? Uh, uh, and we're never in bondage to any man. So how sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They think they live in a righteous life. The reason we got kicked out and the reason when you, when you, when you uh, give this message to religious people, the reason they reject it is because they don't think they need it. They don't think they need it because they think that the work that I do will suffice when it comes to the righteousness of God. Amen. But your work are as filthy Amen. rags to God. Amen. 
know what that so, means. So, and, and that filthy rag, we discuss what that means, right? Mm -hmm. so, but, so understand this. They didn't think they were in bondage to anybody because they were Abraham's seed. Religious people today don't think they need God's grace. Why? Because they think that what I've done and what I've been taught is sufficient. Okay, be my guest. But look what, look what Jesus answered them. Barely, barely, I say unto you, whosoever, that's anybody, committed sin is the what? Servant of sin. No way out. You're the servant of sin. So even if you're in Abraham's seed, you're the servant of sin. Even if you've been taught by the bishop, even if you've been taught since a little child and you grew up in the same church for 50 years, you're still a servant of sin if you have not been free from sin. And the only way to be free from sin, go back to uh, Romans 6, the only way to be free from that sin is to be servants of righteousness. And how do we do that? By putting our trust in the work that he performed on the cross. That's how. That, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a very good point. That's a pivotal point in the scripture. And, and, and understand that all of these things relate, but you have to make the division. To really understand God and how he's operating, you have to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. So when you rightly divide the word of truth, now it all makes sense. Because before, when you ask a hard question, in the denomination of the church, they're just going to say, well, just pray about it and have faith. <laughs> no, 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 no. Give me the answer. Because I need to know, why does it say over here, work faith without works is dead, but over here, Paul says, to him that worketh not is righteousness. Something don't add up. And the reason being is because one is talking to Israel and the other one is talking to us today. So when you're right to divide, I don't need to just have faith and pray. I need for you to explain to me what this means. And when they can't explain it to you, now you're not being humble because now you're questioning their authority. Right? That's, that's not the case. I'm not questioning you. I just want to know the answer. And by you being my pastor, you should be able to give me this answer. Amen. Right? Yeah. And, and, and most times, Paul says they'll use, uh, uh, they'll use uh, 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 wisdom of words, Paul says. So they'll, they'll, they'll make it sound good because they know they can't give you the answer. But understand, when you're right to divide the word of truth, everything begins to make sense, right? Uh, Ro uh, Romans 6, verse number 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what? Yeah. Death. What Paul is saying is that now, when you look back over your life, the fruit that you brought forth, you're going to now be ashamed of. Right? Because when I was out here living in sin, I enjoyed it. But now when I look at it, it does not compare to the freedom I have in Christ now. Amen. So what Paul says, well, uh, uh, what fruit had you then? Everything you did by being in religious church, by growing up and doing what your parents taught you, if it was not this message, you, did, you brought forth fruit worth of, unto death. It was not righteous fruit, right? And it says, well, the end of those things is what? Death. Death. But what? Uh, uh, and we're going to read it here in verse 23. But look at verse 22. But now. You see, every time you see the word but now, that's why we named the fellowship but now fellowship. Because every time you see but now, it explains the dispensational change. Right? But now. Before you were service to sin, you brought forth fruit that you needed to be ashamed of. But now. See, now that I'm in Christ, what? I'm being made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end is everlasting life. See, but when you bring forth fruit unto sin, you're going to be ashamed of that. When these people who follow tithing and water baptism and all these things contained in this law, when you follow these things, you're going to be ashamed before God. That's why Paul says, study to show thyself approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2, verse 8, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the gospel of grace, you people may think you're something down here, but you're going to be ashamed before God. Right? Paul says, thank you so much. Paul said, these people who seem to be pillars. You, you go to these churches, these people seem to be, they, they sit in the special seats at the pulpit. Jesus. They have the robes on. They seem to be somebody who, who, who's astute in the word of God. 
But you ask them a simple question and they don't rightly divide, they can't answer it. Right? So, so what, what you have to understand is how free you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. I can wear jeans to church. I can wear tennis shoes. I can wear shorts. Amen. I can wear earrings if I'm a woman. I can wear pants if I'm a woman. All of those things are legalistic things that have Amen. nothing to do with salvation. Amen. Praise God. But most churches still keep you in religious bondage. They do. And I'll become servants of sin and, uh, and of iniquity because they oppose the will of God for today. See, you're not opposing me when I bring you this message. You're opposing God's word. So when you do things to me because you feel that it's right or just, you've got to answer to God, not me. I just thank you for it because now you really put me into the mind frame of what God actually wants me to do, which is teach now. Right? Before I was in bondage, I couldn't teach this. Jesus. But now I'm what? Free well, from that. Jesus. I'm able to teach and to preach the will and the righteousness of God for today. And look at verse 23. For the wages of sin is what? Death. 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 Jesus. Because you go to work every day, you expect a what? Paycheck. Paycheck. Because you live in this sinful flesh every day, you should expect death. <laughs> the wages of your sin <laughs> is death. death. And we're going to get in verse 7, Paul is going to say that, that the law, not only, uh, 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 your flesh is not only sinful because you follow the law, but your flesh generates sin. And because it generates sin, your wage is death. Jesus. But look at the next word, but, which is in contrast to the thing that was said before. But the gift of God, it's a gift. If I give you something, that means you have to work for it. No. No, that means it's a gift. Yeah. If you had to work, it would not be you called a gift. Right. Yeah. It would be called a wage, just like it was. But look how significant this verse is. For the wage of sin is death because you had to work for that. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. How long is eternal? Forever. So it ain't no such thing as about I can lose my salvation. Because eternal means forever. So, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So what that means is that once I get saved, I'm always saved. All right. So people who don't believe that are opposing God's will. You're in iniquity. Right? So understand now, we're not saying go live in the kind of way you want because you're saved. Because we just read that. God forbid. Mm -hmm. yeah. God forbid. But we live according to the righteousness that is within us. Yeah, when, when somebody give you a gift, don't expect to have the receipt with the package. <laughs> you yeah, that? that's when a good point. A lot of times they have, money, they have you want your receipt. They have gift, they have gift yeah. receipts now. Yeah. Yeah. So just in case you don't like it, you can take it back. Yeah. Right? They have the gift. There's no gift receipt needed right here. Jesus, there's, there's no gift receipt needed, right? Because the gift of God is eternal life. I don't want to return this for nothing. I don't want to exchange because there's nothing better to exchange for. Because normally when you exchange something, you exchange it to get something better. One size fits all. Once And one size fits all. One size fits all. So I'm free now and I've given eternal life through Jesus Christ. See, most of our denominational brethren, they don't understand his work. They say Jesus died for us, but they really don't understand how free we are. Because if you're teaching any type of legalism and bondage under the law, you don't understand your position in Christ. Mm -hmm. Chapter number seven. We'll get started here. Now, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how the law had dominion over man as long as he what? Yes. Who was the audience here? Israel. Yes. Why? How do we know that? Because it's them that know the law. Because them that know the law. God only gave his law to who? Israel. So now what Paul is going to say here, he's going to be talking to Israel. Right? Excuse me. Now look at verse 2. For the one, now go back to verse 1. How that the law had what? Dominion. Dominion over a man as long as he what? Yeah. Go back to go back to Romans six verse fourteen. For sin shall not have dominion, dominion over you. Why? 
For you're not under the law, but under what? Grace. So obviously we know two things here. In verse 7, verse 1, he's talking to Israel because they had the law. And they, they don't understand that how free you are and dominion, sin doesn't have dominion over us today. Right? So that's his audience here. Look at verse 2. For the woman which had an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he what? Yeah. Now understand this. Marriage is something that the Jews knew about. So what Paul is going to do is break it down for them in a way that they can understand it. Mm -hmm. Right? See, because not everybody can understand that we're not under the law, but we're under grace. And Titus tells us that it's grace that disciplines us. It's grace that saves us not by works of our own, but works of what he did. So when you explain it to people, because they've been taught this for so long, they don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. So you got to give it to them in a way they can understand it, right? So that's what Paul is doing here. These Jews were only thing they knew was the law, because that's the only thing that were taught. So all of these denominational churches who thinks they're spiritual Israel, how can we be spiritual Israel when out here they will be spiritual Israel? We can't take their place, right? So understand, but this is all that's been taught in these churches. All that's been taught is how to do these things contained in the law. Amen. So they automatically reject this message of grace, which the Jews were going to do. But Paul says, let me give it to them in a way that at first I want to let them know who I'm talking to. Because I'm talking to those who know the law. So I'm going to first let you know who I'm talking to. And now I'm going to give you an example that you know very much about. We understand that the, the, the wedding vows, to death, do you solemnly swear to death do us part? Uh -huh. that, you're bound, it's a contract. Back here, they had the what? Law. Law. But what, 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 was it, what was it contained under? Their what? Covenant. Their covenant. So that covenant bound them to the law. Because a covenant is an agreement between two parties. So God made a covenant with Israel. How can we be added to the covenant? If three people are in a two-man covenant, two-person covenant, then the covenant is made void. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but if God said it, he meant it. Mm -hmm. So we can't make it void. I don't care how much you try to add yourself to That's it, right. you're not in it. Right? So what he's saying, they were bound because of the contract, the legal binding to the law. So they were they understood that according to marriage. So this is what uh, they were sealed in blood. Oh. They were sealed right here, right? So now what we have to say, uh, when God gave them that law, essentially what he did is made a marriage covenant with them. Mm -hmm. So they understood about marriage, right? Uh, so Paul is going to use this example of this. Go to 1 Corinthians real quick, chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but, here we go, if her husband be dead, she is at what? Liberty to be married to whom she will, only what? They have to be a grace believer. That's what he's saying. Only in the Lord. Because in the Lord today means to what? be saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's saying there. Go back to Romans 7. So understand that he's given them this thing about marriage and the law. I, I, watch, I, I wish we could get into this. Watch how Paul breaks this down. Verse 2. for the uh, Chapter 7, verse 2. For the woman which had an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. If we have, we, uh, uh, by spiritual baptism that like we saw in verse 6, go, look at Romans 6. Romans 6, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his what? His death. death. And because of that, we're made free from the law. Mm -hmm. So understand, go back to uh, uh, Romans 7, verse 2. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Because we're dead with Christ and buried with him and raised again with his resurrection, we're free from that law. Mm -hmm. We're free from the bondage of that, that, that law, right? Look at verse 3. So then, if, understand this is a condition, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called and what? If anybody over here, let, let me put it this way. 
for adultery over here, what was your punishment? Yeah. Death. 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 Stoning. There was no blood sacrifice for that. Right? So that was your death. So, so understand what Paul is saying. So if I'm under the law here, but I try to live under grace, what's your punishment? Death. 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 Right? That's your punishment. But what Paul is going to explain to them, because Jesus already died, the, hu the husband of the law died. Mm -hmm. So now you're free from the law of sin. You don't have to face the punishment because he did. So you're free to live under grace now. Amen. That's what he's going to describe, to describe to them. Any of our denominational brethren, if they don't understand the message, just read Romans 6 and 7. Because it tells us how we're free from the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have to live in the bondage of these things contained back here. Mm -hmm. She shall be called an adulteress, but if her husband be what? Dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man. See, but now because you're dead, I can live under grace now. Jesus. Because Christ died. In a marriage, when your husband and wife dies, you're free to marry somebody else. But if you're married while the person is still alive, you become an adulterer. That's layman's terms. And you get stoned. And then your wage, your paycheck is dead. But the gift of God. Right? We're going to end here. Uh, let's read verse 4. Uh, wherefore, my brother, ye also, Paul says, my brother, and why? That's his countrymen. That's his countrymen. That's his kindred. Why? Because Paul was a what? Jesus. A Jew. Understand that. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. The church, the body of Christ, was never mentioned back here. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves to preach, oh, you got to do this for the body of Christ. How do you know about the body of Christ if you didn't know Paul's epistles? Jesus. See, we, we, we want to be a part of the body of Christ, but we put ourselves back under this covenant. We're not under any covenants. We're strangers from the covenants of promise, Ephesians 2 and 11. Right? So understand, Paul is, is pleading with them. Now, listen, brothers. I was, I was just like you are. In the flesh, I'm just like you are. But we're free from that now. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Mm. You are saved by grace through faith now. You are in the body of Christ. Mm. So you don't have, you're free from this back here. Anybody who's saved today and you're part of the body of Christ, you don't have to listen to anybody that puts you under the law. Amen. That's not coming from me. That's the commandment of God. Amen. Right? Uh, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead. We're not... We're, Understand what he's saying now. We're raised from the dead because we died in him. That we should bring forth what? Fruit, Fruit unto God, right? Now, this is goes to say that we don't live any kind of way we want. Our Christian walk brings fruit unto God. The way we walk, the way we do things, right? Uh, because go, go to Galatians 2 real quick and we'll end with this. The Christian walk is the life of Christ manifested in your mortal flesh. So you don't live any kind of way you want because Christ tells us that it's the love of God that constrained us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what did I say? Galatians? Galatians 2. Yeah, Galatians 2 verse 20. See, when you understand your position in Christ, you understand I'm, not, I'm free from the law, I live under grace, and it's why. Look at Galatians 2, verse 20. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ because spiritually I've been baptized into his what? Death. There's only one baptism. We don't need water. That was Israel's program. They needed it. We don't need water. If you go down, you're just going to come up wet. That's it. That's all that means. We don't need water because we have something more important. The water was just a shadow of what was to come for them out here. But we have the real thing. Right? Jesus. If somebody draws you an outline of a car and says, you know what? One day you're going to get this car, but you steady catching the bus to work. Mm -hmm. You don't want the shadow of what was to come. You want the car right now. Right? That's right. That's right. right? Yes, right. Well, listen, we don't need the water. I want Jesus Christ. Amen. So understand, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Mm -hmm. So now I can live, but because for, before I was spiritually what? Dead. Dead. Now I can live, yet not I. Understand this. I don't walk in, in, in newness of life because of, of my own works, but what? 
Christ liveth in me. E-T-H is in that word means continually. Liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's key. Notice this now. It doesn't say I live by faith in Jesus Christ, but I live by faith what? Of the Son of God. That means his faith rests in me and allows me to walk circumspectively. Right? So it's his faith. Why? Because who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead what? In vain. See, if I'm made righteous, if I'm made righteous by tithing, that means what Jesus did on the cross is in vain. If I'm made righteous because I submit to a, uh, a church's doctrine, then Christ died in vain. If I'm made righteous because I, I come to the building, then Christ is made in vain. If I'm righteous because I wear, if I'm a woman, I wear white on the second Sunday, Christ is dead in vain. None of those things matter, but it's Christ that liveth in me to do of his good will and his good pleasure, right? So we don't live any kind of what we want, but we bring forth fruit unto God. Amen. And it's righteous fruit, not fruit unto death, right? Uh, uh, and people say, well, what's the harm in it? That's the harm in it. You're bringing forth fruit unto death instead of fruit unto righteousness, right? Uh, we'll, we'll go back to uh, Romans uh, 7, and we'll end here. And we'll, 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 that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And we'll pick back up in verse 5. All minds and hearts clear? Amen. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Uh, we thank you for this everlasting love. We thank you that you first loved us. And we thank you that you commended your love to us even while we were yet sinners. And you died on that cross. We thank you for, for, for life everlasting. We thank you for eternal life. Even as a present possession. I don't have to wait, but I get it and receive it now because of the blood of Christ and the work on the cross. We thank you for salvation. Father God, we thank you for the knowledge, oh God. We thank you for righteousness. Thank you, we thank you that we're able to walk in newness of life yes. and become one new man, the body of Christ, because of what you've done. Thank and God, we thank you right now. We continue to lift up your name, praise your name, and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us uh, fellowship for about five minutes, and then we'll get started with Amen. the morning service.